Okay, so just in the final part of this video, I just want to talk about the text that we'll be covering in this course. Uh, these are, uh, I hope, a, a great uh, collection of texts that hopefully there's a lot of kind of connections that emerge between them as the, as the course goes on. Um, so I'm just gonna, so Cat Person, uh, it comes from this uh, short story collection uh, that uh, Rupanian was actually offered a million dollars after, a million dollar advance to write this book after Cat Person came out. So Cat Person is one of the short stories uh, in this book. Uh, I, I also like this short story collection. If you liked Cat Person, I would recommend uh, following up and uh, checking this book out. Uh, it is quite a, uh, a bit, uh, there's some stories that are quite a bit darker actually than, than Cat Person, uh, stories that are almost like horror. Uh, there's a lot of uh, exploration, explorations of, of sex that are kind of very uh, ambiguous and pretty dark. So it, it does provide some kind of additional context uh, to Cat Person that uh, when you see the author kind of uh, flexing a little bit uh, the different kind of stories that she can she can write uh, it does show how much cat person was this kind of construction um, which is something that uh, a lot of people kind of needed to be constantly reminded of because uh, I remember when uh, cat person came out uh, Rupanian stated that she kept being interviewed uh, by these news outlets as this kind of millennial woman uh, who was navigating uh, gender-based uh, or, uh, yeah, uh, heteronormative uh, relationships with men. Uh, and Rupenian was actually just starting, uh, I think, her first serious uh, relationship with a woman at the time. So there was this complete disconnect. <laughs> she isn't really a, a millennial woman, woman navigating the waters of heterosexuality at all. That's just the character in her in, in cat person. So so this is the where cat person uh, comes from. Uh, the next next week's readings from Marie Calloway. Uh, here is the short story book that uh, those uh, stories come from. They're accessible online, but they're also in this uh, short story collection. Uh, so not to scare you, uh, but it is a bit of a strange cover, which kind of goes with the, the strange uh, tone to her writing a little bit. So it is a, like her short stories, it's a, it's a cover to her book that kind of really confronts you. And, and definitely, as I was talking about, kind of looks back at you a little bit uh, as uh, Callaway is looking back uh, at the reader on this cover. It's definitely a bit of a conversation starter. If you have this book, why this author chose to have her face in this with a kind of uh, uh, ambiguous look on it on the cover of her book, uh, really kind of confronting the reader. And the, the title of the book is uh, What Purpose Did I Serve in Your Life? So again, kind of interrogating an interrogative question that kind of lends itself to the whole interrogative tone of, of this cover and on both sides of the book there are photos of, of Callaway um, and it also kind of goes with the the auto fiction element of her writing so she is kind of writing about her own life experiences uh, her own body uh, her own subjectivity are all kind of very immersed in the stories that she tells although there is still always that kind of minimal gap of separation that we need to remember uh, between an author, uh, Marie Calloway, and the narrator of the text, which isn't Marie Calloway, but it's uh, construction. So, so yeah, these texts will, will be interesting. I'm interested to see your guys' uh, reaction to them. Um, they're kind of similar to Cat Person in terms of uh, documenting kind of these date encounters where uh, the, the interactions are a little bit ambiguous or, or strange. Um, and I should just, the book opens with an, uh, an epithet from the feminist 1970s uh, theorist, sorry, it's hard to show, if you can see, so because of our social circumstances, male and female are really two different cultures and their life experiences are utterly different. 
And that's from Kate Millett's Sexual Politics, uh, which was a really important book of, of feminist theory, uh, published in 1970, I think. Um, and it kind of did a literary deconstruction of a lot of kind of popular uh, authors at the time. So um, kind of famous uh, authors like D.H. Lawrence. Uh, she kind of goes through them and deconstructs their, deconstructs their misogyny. Um, and that, that quote from uh, Millette is also kind of an important touchstone for, for this text and also for the course, that there is this gap between uh, male experience and female experience that is very difficult, perhaps impossible, to completely overcome. So there's a communicational, uh, there's a communicational gap that any writing talking about gender uh, navigates or negotiates um, that, yeah, this text especially does. Um, I don't have the short story collections for the, the next two weeks of, of short stories that we're reading. I think, so Mary Self, who's a writer, a writer of a short story in week three, uh, she just very recently published a collection of short stories. Uh, I'm intending to buy it because I really like the short story that we're reading in week three, but I don't have it yet. So we'll just get into the, to the novels at this point. So this is the first novel that we're going to be reading, uh, Taipei by Dao Lin. Uh, just to give you guys some idea of it's, if you don't have the physical copy, it's uh, uh, how thick it is, so you know how much reading you have to do. So here's Dao Lin. Let me try this again. So here's the blurb for, uh, for Taipei. So this is from Brett Easton Ellis, who is the author of American Psycho, uh, which was made into a very kind of popular movie with uh, Christian Bale. And Brett Easton Ellis writes that with Taipei, Dao Lin becomes the most interesting pro stylist of his generation. So a pretty big compliment. Although I know that uh, there is actually a part of this quote from Easton Ellis that was cut out. Uh, so the last half of the sentence was removed where he says, that doesn't mean that Taipei isn't a very boring novel. So his praise for Taipei is also a little bit tempered that he thinks it's a very boring book. Um, and boring uh, might be a good way to describe uh, Taipei because it is a little bit boring. Even though the characters in this book, they, they do copious amounts of drugs, uh, they have sex, they, they, they travel around the world, they travel to, the, to Taipei, they're in New York, they go to Las Vegas. Um, it seems like there's all the structure there for an exciting book, but uh, the main narrator of this book, uh, I would describe him as having no desire, so being desireless. He has, or uh, experiencing zero to very little pleasure in anything beyond the internet. So all his his uh, subjectivity is all all his desire is all kind of channeled through the internet um, and he has trouble connecting to people major troubles connecting to people uh, in their kind of uh, IRL bodies um, whereas on the internet he can he can more easily connect to people so that's the first novel that we're, we're gonna read um, I should say just as kind of a something that's uh, as a word of caution that Dao Lin uh, I only mentioned this because of the context of the course but Dao Lin had his own kind of not so much Me Too mo moment, but he was perhaps canceled is a is the right word. Um, he did do he did do something pretty awful, and um, we'll kind of maybe talk about that a little bit when we get to to the text and and what that means to kind of read a text from a, a, a slightly to very problematic author. Okay, so uh, the next text we read after uh, Taipei is uh, Caroline Kepnes's You, uh, which you might have some experience of from the Netflix TV show, which has been pretty popular, uh, starring Penn Badgley. Um, so if you have seen the Netflix show, uh, you will have to also read the novel, because the novel is quite a bit different from the TV show. And those differences are a little bit interesting. So in the TV show, if you haven't seen it, uh, the main character, uh, he's like this avatar of toxic masculinity, pretty much. He's like everything bad 
about men today kind of collapsed into a single kind of entity. Um, so he, but in the TV show, that that entity has the or avatar of toxic ma uh, masculinity has the very handsome, uh, very charming uh, face and persona of Penn Badgley. So there, it does create this like interesting tension that this really awful person is so charming and handsome in the TV show. Uh, it's kind of similar in the book, but the problem, the difference is that there's no Penn Badgley in the book. So this character has all the kind of the negative traits, but none of the none of the charm really. Well, he has his own kind of charm, but it's different from kind of Penn Badgley level charm. So. The book is a little bit more of a grueling experience, I think, than the TV show. Um, and grueling, I mean that there's a lot of very extremely misogynistic language in this book, as well as descriptions of, of violence, um, so particularly against women. So it is a bit, it is a bit more of a kind of a brutal experience that sometimes, not to be soft or anything, but I do have a little bit of trouble <laughs> just binge reading this book because sometimes the language does get pretty pretty brutal um, and it is interesting maybe to think about that brutal kind of I would describe it maybe as 4chan kind of language the kind of the kind of attitudes directed at women you see on kind of these websites these scummy websites like 4chan uh, put on the page so um, yeah um, it is a bit of a thicker book so but it is uh, probably much more readable than uh, Taipei Okay, and then I don't have uh, Mira Gonzalez's uh, poetry book, I'll Never Be Beautiful Enough to Make Us Beautiful Together. I just have the PDF, like you guys, uh, and hopefully you guys got that PDF in the email I sent to you. Um, so, yeah, so that text is uh, is on the list. Uh, it caused a bit, a bit of a stir, I remember, when uh, the pop singer Lily Allen posted a photo of her reading it on her Instagram, uh, and just from the title, a lot of uh, Alan's followers on Instagram thought that she was uh, going through kind of uh, marriage trouble just because of the title uh, having this kind of significance to it. Um, so so that that book, uh, I think its value to the course is, is that, uh, well, its value is that it's a poetry book and I put it in a fiction course. So. Um, hopefully, and hopefully it gives us a little bit of a break from, from fiction and uh, lets us look at a different genre of writing, uh, which is poetry. Okay, and just the, the final text, so the one to close it out, uh, Private Citizens uh, by Tony Tula Tamute. Uh, as you can see, I have a library copy of this book from the Burnaby Public Library, which I don't have to return <laughs> now. Uh, which is, I guess, one of the very few small perks of, of this this time period of the of the virus. Um, so, this this novel is, has been kind of described as the millennial novel. So we'll see if it kind of holds up when we read it. If you guys think that it does kind of capture uh, for the millennials in our class, whether it does kind of capture something unique about uh, millennial experience, uh, particularly millennial relationships. There's some very kind of bizarre very bizarre, uh, kind of a thread of this course is very bizarre relationships between people uh, in, by where in which the internet has a, has a, has a pretty large influence. Um, so, so we'll see how, how this, how this text goes. This is the one that closes out the course and it presents a couple, I guess, case studies of, of, of millennial relationships that uh, we'll see if you guys find believable or not. Um, uh, also, it's a very kind of cleverly written book. So if you guys kind of like clever, clever writing, it'll probably make you hopefully make you learn a bunch of new words. Uh, it comes from a stan it's about talking about Stanford students. Um, so it's kind of a little bit of a campus novel, but not so much. Um, but it is kind of and it's written by uh, the writer Tony Tumute, uh, who also went to Stanford. So uh, it's a little bit pretentious. Uh, and a little bit clever, but if you like that kind of writing, then you'll like uh, this book. And uh, Tony Tula Tamute will also be reading him when we read The Feminists in week three. Okay, so those are the courses of the those are the those are the texts of the course. Um, 
this video has gone pretty long at this point, so I think I'll just kind of quickly wrap it up. Uh, I will be recording another video uh, in which I talk about uh, cat person more in depth. So I'll see you guys in that video. Bye for now.